Hello and a very warm welcome from the three of us to my junk journal podcast episode number four. If this is the first podcast you are watching, be sure to check out the playlist linked below where you can find the previous three episodes. So I am super lucky today. I get to have two of my amazing design team members here. Maybe you've seen Louisa in one of the previous episodes, but Rhonda is here for the first time and we will make a very quick introduction round in case you don't know who we are. So I'm your host, Barbara, also known as 49 Dragonflies. I've had my Junk Journal YouTube channel since April, 2018. I have then created my own small creative one woman show business in September, 2020. So a little over a year ago, which is absolutely unbelievable. Part of this business is my online store for digital junk journal, Ephemera. Luise, would you like to go next? Yeah, my name is Luise. I am from Austria as Barbara, <laughs> but really far away. <laughs> Um, I was born in Germany and now I'm here and I have my YouTube channel since 2017 I think and that's also the time when I started making junk journals and yeah I have a shop as well where I um, sell digitals my shop is on Etsy I have that since I think the beginning of 2019 I guess yeah, I really enjoy making junk journals with this little touch of art journaling. Thank you, Louise. I just want to mention before we get to Rhonda that, of course, all three channels and the stores will be linked down below for you in case you want to check any of those out. So Rhonda, would you like to introduce yourself? I would. My name is Rhonda Winstead. And I'm also known as Rhonda without an H on my Etsy uh, store. It's just, I can't give you, you guys are like, hello, you give all these exact dates. And I'm like, oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I can tell you that I've had my, uh, I've been doing my YouTube channel since about 2016. Wow. Um, but not really focusing a ton on that and uh, my Etsy shop has been in existence for a while <laughs> <laughs> um I love creating I would call myself not a real mixed media artist but I do love combining stitching sewing fabrics and papers together and in my junk journaling, you know, in my journey. So I'm just happy to be here. Thanks, guys. Oh, I'm so happy to have both of you here. This is so exciting. And Rhonda, can you just tell me for, or tell our viewers from where you are? I mean, from where from I live. Where can, yeah, where you live. <laughs> I, am, I, I am in Jonesboro, Alaska. <laughs> Jonesboro, Arkansas. They start with A, both of them. <laughs> And I have lived in Alaska. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jonesboro, Arkansas. Arkansas. And okay. I've been all over the West. I've lived mostly in the West states and was born in Idaho and raised in Utah and recently moved from Washington State. So oh, you've been around quite a bit. Wow. I, I have been a lot of places. My husband's work has taken him to a lot of different places and we are here in retirement. Oh. It's kind of in the middle of where all of our kids and grandkids live. So oh, okay. shorter time to travel to see various kiddos. Right. Very strategic. <laughs> it was. It, it really was. Well done. <laughs> Okay, should we move into the questions? Yeah, maybe I should I should mention. So these questions are from Rhonda's channel. So she asked in one of her previous videos if anyone would like to ask questions for this podcast. And I'm super thrilled with the questions. Uh, there's a lot of really fun ones in here. We did take the ones out that we've already kind of been over in previous episodes. So don't worry if your question is not answered in this episode, please go check the previous episodes. So I think Louise, you have one to start <laughs> off with. The first question is, 
what's your favorite paper to use in junk journals and why? Ah, love the question. <laughs> yeah, and I would like to start to answer that because I think I have a, some kind of a funny story. And I also have my favorite paper here <clears throat> so that you can see it. It's this crazy thing here. I don't know if the camera can catch that, but it's yeah. really like a little bit crumbled and in this really cool green and brown color. It's, it looks not so spectacular, but the story is a little bit crazy. So I went to Rome and I walked through the streets and then I saw one of these little shops where you can buy nearly everything. And this is yeah, some kind of a labyrinth. When you go in, you have the feeling that you are in a completely other world, like in these Harry Potter movies. You go in and you think, where am I here? And it's really, really crazy. There are so high shelves that you can't even see the, the things that are on the very top and you can buy everything there. It's totally a mess and confusing. And I, I'm not buying something there when I go into those shops, but I like to be in those shops. And um, yeah, when I wanted to go out, I saw a bunch of these papers here laying on the floor. And I thought that that was meant to pack the things that the people are buying there. For example, some glassware or something like that. And I thought, I want to have this paper. This looks so cool and some kind of handmade. So I took some of these, <laughs> went to this man in the shop and I said, I want to buy that. And he looked at me like, uh, what <laughs> and then I, I don't know what I have paid I think five euro for yeah this bunch of paper wow. and I was so happy when I went out <laughs> like yeah some kind of a treasure and I brought it to the hotel and now I have it here and I really like to use it in my personal junk journals it's really rare that I put it into custom orders or something like that because it's so yeah precious <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what was it actually meant for did it, I mean did did they not sell it as a regular item or I, I don't know I think this man was so shocked that that he sh uh, thought she shall go out of my shop give her the paper take some money and say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> wow so how much do you still have left of that oh I think two or three of these sheets but they are really big you can fold them out like yeah, oh, okay 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 <laughs> maybe you should frame a piece and put it on your wall to make sure yeah that's that, that that, way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's such a fun story <laughs> and what do you have to say to this question barbara <laughs> oh well i think my current answer and i say current because this has just been developing in the last few weeks. If you would have asked me this maybe a month ago, I would have probably said just vintage papers, vintage documents, vintage postcards, but that has moved to number two now. And number one is now paper like this. So this is like <laughs> what, what I would call collage fodder. And this is the kind of paper that you create while you're creating like your real thing, you know, <laughs> like when you have leftover paint on your brush, you just put some down on the scrap that's next to you and you keep doing that. And that's how these papers come about. And they are the best to have on hand <laughs> for collaging. Like I am so in love with these papers. <laughs> I feel like I don't need anything else. Just give me these, these collage scraps and I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> How do you handle that during your craft process? Do you have a box on your desk or, or how do you do that? I mean, you can't have all these papers around you or how does that I work? Have a, I have a <laughs> acrylic box where I keep all of these and usually it's on a chair next to me because they don't okay. fit on my crafting desk, which looks like a bomb has exploded on it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so I have a pretty big box for them. But I think I create more than I can use, which is, I think, what we all experience with paper scraps if, we, yeah. scraps if we're in junk journaling. So, yeah, I need to use a lot. I need to make a lot of collages. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda, what about you with this question? Well, I don't have any show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have favorites in uh, what I'm currently doing. And I absolutely love, 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 love crunchy, 
crinkly, the sound of glassine oh. and a sandwich bags, the glassine bags, you know, give me some thin paper. And I'm just like, yay. I <laughs> love it. Love it. My, my second best would, would be like Barbara only. I, I want the antique or the, the vintage uh, book pages. Mm. Love love those too so that was kind of a a tough one for me but you know if it crinkles I'm like oh that's nice yeah, that's a good thing <laughs> I think we can both relate to that and yeah. I'm sure a lot of our viewers can as well <laughs> so Rhonda I believe you have another question for us I do I'm curious to know and thank you to who submitted this in the crafting world has inspired you now, I know there are probably lots and lots, but I'm always looking for additional inspiration, and you may know someone I don't currently watch. And I think that's a great question for us. I think I'll go ahead, if that's okay, and share mine first. There are those that we, I think we all, you know, the, the big names that we all kind of know and follow and and I do have to, Barbara, I apologize, but I have to give a shout out to two of these people and I'll explain that why. One of those would be yourself, 49 Dragonflies, and the other one would be Gail Agostinelli. And the reason that I picked these two to start with was Gail was the one who encouraged me as my Etsy shop that helped promote me and got me to a place where, you know, I had a, a steady business kind of thing with it and just encouraged me with my pages and things that I make. And so I have to give her a shout out and you because you took a chance with me Aww. on putting me on your design team and you didn't know me. And it was just, I don't know, I just felt this love and connection for you. And so I, anyway, so I know that was, you know, not kind of what we're doing, but now I'll move on <laughs> to three other, I think are wonderful ladies that are doing a YouTube videos. Uh, the first one that I have known the longest would be Susie with Creative Cafe Girl. She likes to use Tim Holt images, but she does, hers is very grungy. It's more, what's the word for well, neutral. She mm -hmm. likes to work in neutrals, but mm -hmm. she does combine stitching with her papers. And I just find her work inspiring. Another one would be uh, Peggy, the paper bumblebee. She's a newer one that I've started mm -hmm. watching and I'm loving her work. Mm -hmm. I'm loving her creativity and really enjoying her videos. And then the other one that I'd like to just give a shout out to would be uh, Claire with Purple Poppy. She also does more with the grungy and with regular coffee dyeing paper to make it into some amazing different things. And I know these ladies, the three that I just mentioned, they're kind of, they don't do what I do. I'm more color in mine and a little more bright. I'm not like scream, you know, loud, loud, loud to put your sunglasses on, but but definitely not as subdued as they are, but I love the inspiration I get from them. And so you don't have to just follow or view videos that are just your own style to get no. inspired. No. And so I, I really like that. So Barbara, what, what are your thoughts about that question? Well, third, first of all, thank you so much for, for what you said. I'm super touched and I'm so happy to have you on my team, Rhonda. You are such an asset and such a channel of positivity. I, I really get so inspired by watching you and seeing your attitude towards things. That's what really touches me when I watch your videos. So the pleasure is all mine, seriously. <laughs> I seriously love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so the three channels I picked 
I, I wanted to take channels that have under 10,000 K subscribers. I didn't want to take any of the well-known ones because as Rhonda, as you said, they are well-known already. So I'd rather help out some channels that, you know, that need a little more support, I believe, or that deserve more support in my eyes. And all three of these have really inspired me. The, so the first one I'm going to mention is someone I've been watching now for probably a year or so on and off. And her name is Luna Rosu. She makes the most beautiful TNs. She uses a lot of real vintage ephemera. She combines it with digitals. It's hard to tell sometimes what is what. She adds a lot of fabric and I don't know. I find it so inspiring. She usually just has flip, flip, flip throughs on her <laughs> channel. She doesn't show like how to's or tutorials. She has a couple, but not too many. So most, mostly flip through, flip, my goodness. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't say it. flip throughs, <laughs> but I just love them. The second one is so a channel that I've discovered a few months ago, and the name is Ruby and Pearl XO. And she also uses a lot of beautiful vintage papers. She has a lot of soft colors, pastel colors, a lot of whites. I'm totally in love. And the third one I just discovered a couple of weeks ago, and the name is Penny and Rose. And I don't think she's been on YouTube for too long. She also has a lot of not only TNs, but also different kinds of junk journals. She has partially a very whimsical style and a lot of journals look bohemian, although she never calls them bohemian, but for me, they, to me, they look very bohemian. And she also uses a lot of vintage ephemera, original ephemera. So I think that's what all three of these have in common that they use vintage ephemera and they do combine it with digitals. And that's exactly what I love. And by the way, all of the channels that we're mentioning now, I'm linking below for you as well. So please go check them out. And see, I'm going to now go check them out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, As you're describing it, I'm just like, yeah, that sounds good. I've got to take a peek. And, yeah, and, you should. Yeah. 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 Louisa, how about you, hun? Yeah, I would like to throw a few German names into this bowl of new channels <laughs> because I thought... Mm, all of you English speaking people have inspired us German speaking people so much and um, also in my German Facebook group they always say oh 49 dragonflies and your name Rhonda also was in the round and the discussion and you are so inspiring for us and this German community is just growing a little bit and I thought I would like to shout out some German channels. Luisa can I just say I have been really jealous of not being able to speak your language, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, really. You know, I'm, I'm, oh, buggers. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Sometimes it's, it's really difficult for the German speaking community because there are so many English terms that you can't translate. I mean, for example, Tessel. You can't translate that into a nice German word. So it became dingle dangle for example so we are trying to find some names that are junk journal terms and it's so hard sometimes because yeah write tuck spot into google and try to find the the definition it's impossible so yeah <laughs> that's a topic so the first channel i would like to shout out is manuela keller she is yeah i don't know on youtube since a year or something like that and she is a really talented acrylic artist. Um, I mean, she, she painted acrylic paintings before she started junk journaling and she's including that into her junk journals in a way that's like, what? <laughs> so she has also just started an Etsy shop and she's painting everything by herself on Procreate. It's really amazing. And she really inspires me because if I ask her something, I get an honest opinion. When I ask her, is this nice? And she says, no, then I know, okay, something is wrong, but she also explains why. And when she likes something, she's like, 
crazy. It's really, really cool to have a discussion with her or to speak about projects and that stuff. And she is making really amazing things. Um, the second one is Pammy Style. She is um, Pamela in her real name. She is from Germany as well. And she is mm, some kind of shy, I would say. I think I know her well enough that I can say that. And she's so cute because she's like, who oh, I'm doing something here and then I'm doing this. And sometimes she also has English subtitles so that you also can understand what she's using there. And then in the end, she has the most amazing result, but the whole process, she's like, who? Oh, do you know what I mean? Like little mouse. <laughs> and in the end, it's this confetti effect and it's really amazing what she is doing. Um, and the third one is Cordula. Her channel is Kunst und Cordula. She is totally new to YouTube and she has a really cool style making this handmade natural paper. I mean, she has some colors as well, but it's, yeah, a little bit like your style, Rhonda. I, I don't want to compare that, but this bam of color combined with this natural things, pressed flowers and that stuff. And she has really cool junk journals with where every page is handmade. And that's totally amazing for me. Yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would just like to mention for the viewers that don't know your channel well, Luisa, Luisa actually posts every video in German and in English. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes me so happy. <laughs> it's insane, though. I don't even want to think about the work that's involved with that. I mean, I just do English and that's enough. <laughs> I have the utmost respect for that, Louise. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. I have a question. Yeah. Cool. So this one says, do you usually have someone in mind when you make a journal? I'm afraid to make journals for sale because I fear people will not understand unique or vintage and antique papers I would love to include. Very interesting question. I thought about this for a while, but actually now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't be the first one to answer this. <laughs> Rhonda, would you like to have a go at this one first? You bet. The short answer is no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> elaborating on that just for a minute, I will explain. When I first started making uh, junk journals for sale, and I did custom orders. I would have requests for, oh, I loved what you did there. Would you consider doing one with this little da 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 or, you know, additions or subtractions or, you know, and I did and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not enjoy the journaling process because I felt like I was so restricted mm -hmm. that it was taking away my creativity because of what someone else wanted. And so I rarely do anything with someone in mind. I may have like a general thing, like I know they like flowers, you know, but that still gives you lots of creativity, at least for me, for mm -hmm. me. I need that ability to let my brain flow and do its thing. And it just doesn't when there's a certain roadblock of a, a person in front of it. For the next part, I fear people will not understand unique or vintage antique papers I would love to include. That word, the important word, I think, in what the gal who posted the question was the fear and I think most of us recognize that fear is a negative word in the journaling process. Well, in anything, really. I've always been taught that fear is the opposite of faith. And, and not everybody's, you know, faith-based, but it's still the opposite of happy and good and, you know, moving forward. And so I would just say, maybe start just with a little bit. 
just give it a try. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Somebody doesn't doesn't buy it. Well, I've got journals that didn't get sold. And I thought, well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but if you love what you do, then, you know, the process will be amazing. And if you don't try it, hon, you'll never know whether it worked or it didn't. Okay, I'm done. Thank you so much. Louise, your input, please. <laughs> yeah. So I have thought, I think the whole night, since we have this prep session yesterday about this answer, because I really didn't know, because I make custom journals as well. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that there's only one person I'm thinking about when I make this journal, and that is me. And I think for this person who wrote this question, that can be really helpful because if she wants to use, or I, I'm talking directly to you, <laughs> if you want to use those vintage papers, then as Rhonda said, just do it and enjoy it. And when you like it, then it is firstly your journal. And if you want to sell it, I think you can only sell it if you love it by yourself. And if you have put everything from your soul and your heart into this journal, otherwise perhaps it will be not sold. And I think this, I have to make something and I have to put this color there and the other day I had a woman who wanted a journal without any lace, not so feminine. And I thought, oh my goodness, I can't do that. I <laughs> use lace as a journal without lace. And then I tried to go into this and into this wish. And suddenly I had, and that was a prayer journal. That was the second thing that was totally out of my mind because so uncomfortable for me. And then I had the most amazing journal that I've ever made in my hands in the end. So, and this feeling that this actual journal is the, is the most beautiful journal that you have ever made. That's the, for me, the stage I want to be when I have finished the, the journal and then it will be sold. There's no other way, it, it will be sold. <laughs> That's my opinion about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit strange, I know. <laughs> no, no, it's totally not strange. I can totally relate to what both of you have said and I think you've said pretty much everything already. I have made a, or I've had a bad experience selling one of my custom made journals. And since then I don't do them anymore. And I have the same feeling about it that Rhonda does. And it totally, I feel totally restricted if I have someone telling me, well, they like purple and I don't like purple or, you know, tell asking me to put things in I normally wouldn't put in. I think it totally hinders my creativity so I have come to the point where I'm like, I'm going to make what I love. And if someone wants to buy it, if I'm willing to sell it, then that's great. And if not, I'm happy to keep it because I love it, right? So then I'll have it on my shelf and I'll have it for inspiration or maybe to write in one day. But I don't like the idea of making someone, making something which is not coming from within you because you want to create it. You are restricting yourself because you're thinking about what will someone else like. And anyway, everyone likes something else. So no matter what you make, someone will love it. But only if you love it yourself, like Louisa was saying, you have to love it yourself and you have to enjoy the process. And I think you have to ask yourself, maybe the first question you need to ask yourself is why am I doing this? Because am I, just, am I just doing this to make money? I don't know how that's going to go. If your love and passion isn't in it, then I don't know how well those are going to sell. But if you make it with love and passion and you put everything into it you're, you have, if your soul is in it, people will notice it. And if you don't make it with love, you're just making it to sell it, people will notice it and it won't sell like Louisa is saying. So I totally agree with that. Just And what Rhonda said is just go for it, try it. But I also want to add that it is not easy to sell junk journals, especially not locally. So I don't know where you are, you know, when you're asking this question. I have made the uh, experience that I cannot sell my journals locally. I've tried it in a bookshop here and people liked looking at it but they were they had no idea what a junk journal was and they're like well what do I do with this 
and it's already so decorated. I don't see how I can even add anything to it. Like, what do you do with this? And they don't see that the price is justified. And then of course the store will want some commission as well. And usually not, not a little. So that's, I don't, I mean, that's not a route I would go. You would, I would highly suggest if you want to do this and if you put your whole heart into it, find a way to sell it online. I don't know if you have a website, if you have maybe a, a blog or you have an Instagram account, do it online where you find like-minded people, no matter where they are in the world. That's your best bet on selling a journal. In general, I would say that for anyone watching and wanting to sell journals, I think that's the way to go. And I think Instagram is a great place for it. You don't need your own shop. You don't need your own website. Put it on there first, maybe get some followers then post it and it will sell. That would be my advice. Do you both agree with that strategy? Yeah, definitely. From your experience? Yeah. Yes. I think it's also this topic that a journal is not, uh, I mean, in the eyes of some people, it's not a piece of art. I mean, if you buy a picture for your wall, a painting or something like that, then you also wouldn't say, yeah, uh, what shall I do with this? I can't do anything with it. It hangs on my wall. You you would never say that. And I think we have this mission that we have to bring this art aspect of journals to the people. And I think that's something that, yeah, two less people are talking about. And um, if the, if the probably the person who wants to buy it can see that then it's, I think, totally different. And also then it's also locally totally different, but there's no junk journal, uh, you know, uh, this English word, like you have Kunstausstellung, Kruzifix. Art, art exhibition. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> if that would exist for junk journals, this whole job would be much more easy to sell them, I think. Yeah, I totally agree with what you guys have said. And I think one of the reasons that in the beginning when I was doing custom orders was I was more in line with, you know, some money, having a little bit of that. I enjoyed the ones that I did for myself, but there again, but I really think the online thing is the, is the way to go. I mean, my own family, they don't understand what I do. <laughs> <laughs> they're totally I mean I have kids and grandkids and they're just sort of like oh yeah that's nice <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I think many junk journals can relate that their families <laughs> have no clue what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> shall I go on with the next question Barbara please okay so the next question is can you share how crafting or especially junk journals has helped you get through the tough seasons of life. Mm. And I would like to give this question to you, Rhonda, because I think you have the most to say about this. Thank you. You'll notice uh, that we're all three wearing hats and Louisa and Barbara are wearing hats for me because I'm wearing a hat because I'm bald underneath and that isn't that just the sweetness of our community our artistic journaling community I mean I just I love it for those of you that don't follow my channel yet <laughs> I have hope <laughs> um, I will share with you what I've shared with my viewers several months ago it was in March April-ish my husband and I were planning on going to serve a mission for our church and in that process you have to go through and have your medical you have to go through a medical process so that they know you're healthy and you know you're healthy to be able to go wherever you're asked to go well in that process I found out that I have a rare form of breast cancer and with further diagnosis and, and whatnot, and you know, getting my cancer doctor, we find that it is stage four and it's incurable. And so, you know, I, I had to kind of adjust. 
to the change of the situation. So obviously I wasn't going on a mission and my mission was to maybe stay alive. <laughs> and through that process, at first I was hesitant to share it with my YouTube family because, well, you know, cause it's, it's personal, it's a health issue and you know, it's, it's just one of those things that we don't always do. But I felt like if I didn't share it with my YouTube family, that I would be lying, that it would be false. I mean, how could I be me and hide something that huge from everybody? And then I just, I realized that, you know what, I'm just going to do it. It was scary, but I just shared. And the amount of love that came my way was just incredible. You guys, I... My subscribers, I think they know it already. I hope. I mean, I say it every video. I just, I just love you, and I love your prayers, and I love your well wishes, and your happy thoughts, and your encouragement, and the, the wonderful little goodies that you've sent to me to give me encouragement along the way. I just, I can't think of another community that I would rather be a part of, and I, and I have really needed to have this artwork to still do videos to still create because that's that's part of who I am I've been doing that my whole life either teaching or learning something and so I just feel like I, I feel like I'm more blessed than I ever have a right to be you know but I just I I just can't say enough about our art community our journal community uh the I don't imagine that all YouTube communities are as amazing as we are. Would you would you guys agree with that? The community that we have, it's priceless, and I think it's one of a kind. Totally, yeah. And so I just, if you're going through something, this is now directly to those of you watching this video. You can do it. Hang in there. You can do it. You are loved. You are important. You are special. Never think that people that we don't care and appreciate you and whatever it is, just hang in there. Tie that knot a little harder and hang on for dear life, guys. <laughs> oh. wow. That's a hard one to follow. <laughs> yeah. Rhonda, I, I would just like to repeat from what, what you know what I said earlier is like you have been such an inspiration I think not only to me but thousands of people who have watched your videos it's it's amazing how you kept going how you pick, kept pushing forward and had a positive attitude I mean you are a role model for I'm sure not only me but for others as well so thank you so much for being on YouTube and for being who you are and and for sharing the love with us it's absolutely amazing I'm I'm so thankful that you're here and that you're part of this community and I, can, I think I can call you my friend so thank you so so much from the bottom of my heart So I, I will try to answer this question too, which is really hard now after Rhonda. <laughs> Taking an example from my personal life is, well, first of all, I think we're all still in a pandemic. So this is not an easy situation for any of us, I think, especially for people maybe that are not as mobile. And I can specifically now relate to that very well because I have a broken ankle <laughs> so I'm not very mobile at the moment and so not only my, not only making videos that's a whole nother topic but just to talk about the crafting itself if I wouldn't have this at this point in my life I would go insane because I'm supposed to be at home with my leg up for three weeks at least how would I do that if I wouldn't have my crafting or my creativity? How, I don't know how I would get through that. On top of that, my hubby is not here at the moment. So I'm alone here in Vienna in a small flat. I cannot imagine my life without this. So I am so, so, so grateful to have this as part of my life and that I'm so passionate about it that it's my whole world at the moment. 
my gosh, I'm tearing up. <laughs> that oh, was God. not planned. That was not planned. <laughs> yeah, I think it can help in any situation. Also, I've been lucky enough to be on a, on a vacation in Egypt a few weeks ago. And I came back and I fell into such a black hole because I didn't want to come back. It was such a shock to my system. And I journaled and it helped me so much just to put it all in my journal, all the emotions and to pair it with images. I don't know what's happening with me at the moment, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it has become my life and I don't, I don't ever want to imagine my life without it. So Louise, can you please go on so I can stop crying? <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. Make you stop crying within seconds. Attention. <laughs> Rona, are you ready? Here's mine. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I love you so much. <laughs> oh, that was perfect, Louisa. <laughs> oh, here's my I love you too. <laughs> oh. <You know. laughs> okay, Louisa, so, please. <laughs> I say I think I realized the answer to this question yesterday when we three talked for the first time. So many people are asking me, where do you get your inspirations? How can you make videos, as you said, in German and in English? That's so much. How can you do that? And as Barbara said, it's it's my life. And that always was my answer. I want to bring this inspiration. I want to share my passion and that stuff. But I always thought something is wrong with this answer. And yesterday, <clears throat> and now I have your problem, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Join yesterday, we <laughs> realized what's the real reason. And my hands are like this now because yesterday I thought I would not like to share this, especially not on your channel because you have so many subscribers and so many people will see that. But I have the feeling when I say this and I say this in public, then it's it can go off from me. I think I was 15 and I was in this grocery store with my parents and um, when we wanted to um, pay our things, I wanted to help my father to put the things to this Kassenband, to this conveyor belt. Yeah, and I was too small to, to catch the things out of this basket. And so I couldn't help him. And he looked at me and he said in this shop to me, you are nothing else than a piece of shit on the street. And he said that to me, and I was like, in this moment, I was, I mean, I was a child, I was 15 or something like that. But very long time later, I realized that this was my whole life, that he and perhaps my mother as well, I don't know, is thinking that about me. My parents always said to, about our own family, that we are the best, the other people are no people that we want to com be compared with or something like that. We always had to be the best. When I had a good um, uh, thing in the school or something like that, or I brought home something really good for me, then they said the neighbor neighbor's child is better and it has yeah something that's better and that stuff. And now I'm realizing and that, yeah, that came to my mind in the last night and it's it's your fault, Rhonda, that, that this is in my mind. I mean, that positive, of course. <laughs> what I'm it's... doing with you, I am just giving you, man, I want to hug you in person, <laughs> both of you. I love you, girls. And I'm so and sorry. You, so sorry you had that. I think it's, it's this, with junk journaling and in this community, there are no fails. I mean, we are talking about accidents or happy accidents or that stuff or something that looks not so nice. But this is something where you can believe that you are enough and that what you are doing is enough and that you can see beautiful things in, in everything. And yeah. <laughs> wow. Who knew so that this was going to be so emotional? Hey, I hope <laughs> I hope the viewers, you might want to warn them to get their tissues out. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> but we didn't we did not anticipate this reaction, I think, between us either. No. <laughs> But we have to give something of that back. I mean, you, you know that we are reading the comments of the viewers and I'm so often sitting there and I'm crying with yeah. my phone in my hand, I'm crying. There are people who are yeah. telling me her whole life in the comments and that's also in public. And, and that's also the reason why I have decided to, to talk about that. And I think this community can only work when we do that. And when we want to cry, then we shall cry. I mean, yeah. Where's the difference between crying together or laughing together? For me, there's no difference because we are together and that's what matters. I, so I guess completely it's, agree. I, I guess it's a form of trust as well, because if we wouldn't yeah. trust the people in our community, we would not yeah. be saying these very, very personal things on a podcast like this. Yeah. So, And if our sharing it can help just one or two people out there that watch this, then it's been worth it, hasn't it? Completely. And it makes me, I mean, both of you being vulnerable and sharing with me, it just makes me love you more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's like lighten it up now. Let's lighten it up. Um, I would say we take one more question because this is, again, a long one. Rhonda, I think you got this one and I think we'll have to leave it at that. Okay. Rhonda, you've got a big one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read the whole thing. Yeah. And then who, which one of you wants to go first? I'll give you the choice. <laughs> okay. What advice do you have for... She did it. This she did is it. totally inappropriate. We should never have this much fun. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. With straight face, she says, what advice do you have for someone thinking of starting a YouTube channel? Also, any tips on how to start journaling and using up junk journals instead of just making them? Do you like monthly prompts? How to break a blank, a blah, break a blank page. <laughs> Love the plan with me for my schedule, but I want to create a journal for myself to work in. Any tips would be helpful. Also, are you planning to do December dailies? So, Luisa, you're up, honey. My advice for someone who's thinking about starting a YouTube channel is don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm joking, <laughs> but it's a little bit truth in my answer because, yeah, you have to be realistic because if you want to do that and you want to do it, yeah, in a regular way, you have to think about how much time do I have? I think, Barbara, you have talked in one of the other podcast episodes about that uh, also, and this is, this can be a full-time job. And if you want to do it regularly and with success, then you have to change your life a little bit, I would say. And I would like to advise that you think about um, why do you want to make this YouTube channel? One, do you want to share your hobby? Then it's not so important to post a video regularly. Or do you want to, for example, sell your work or yeah, whatever can be there. If you have a shop or something like that and you want to promote your shop, then you have to do it regularly. Otherwise, this algorithm will never find you and you will have no success. So that are these things behind a YouTube channel. I think you have to think about that before you start. Then you can go more into detail and in this, into this focal thingy to have success. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy to answer to that because there are so many different um, possibilities why someone would like to have a YouTube channel. Okay, that, that sounds really good. What about the other questions? What yeah. about using up junk journals instead of just making them? Like, yeah. what are your comments think, on that? I think a really good tip is to make a journal for a special reason, I, uh, for example, for a travel or a wedding journal or something like that, so that you know 
why you want to use it. I mean, if you go to a travel and you want to document that, then you can use a journal and then you automatically will have things that you can put into it. You will go to this travel with totally different eyes when you have this journal. And I think then it's easier to find ways how you can journal. Depending on what you have found on this travel, you can decide what you want to do. You can create some pockets or tuck spots out of little tickets or whatever. And I think that's way more easy than making a blank journal with no sense. Do you like monthly prompts is the next thing, I think. Yes and no. I think if there's a list that was created by someone who I know, so for example, if you would make a prompt list, Bronda, I would love to join that because I know that your thoughts are behind that. And I, I have a connection to this list and through that to this person who has created it. But all of those prompt lists that pop up on Instagram or on Google or wherever, I don't like that because there is so much and so that can be so overwhelming. And I have to decide what I want to do. And I can do that more easily when I have a, a face in my mind and a, a person who, can, who I can connect with. How to break a blank page? <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Black gesso, <laughs> brush. <laughs> I mean, that's not a joke. I think <laughs> there are many people who are sitting in front of a blank page, and I think this splattering something is a symbol for just doing something. It's it, no matter what you do, just do it because sitting and looking at this page will not bring you forward you have to do something stamping splattering uh, rectangle pieces Barbara <laughs> collage or whatever but I think this this breaking the blank page is all about doing something and if you splatter black gesso it's the the white is broken <laughs> I think but I can't planning yeah. on doing a December oh. dailies who, Barbara? Yes. <laughs> planning a December daily. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Do you know anything about that? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> some of you might have heard that already. So we have planned a really huge December daily series for this year. It's all about making ephemera. And this series is called Defemoremba. Barbara, say it. <laughs> Do I, have to? I really struggle with this. I've I've practiced now a few times. Uh, if I I can say it slowly, defemaremba. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> First try. I have not not thought that this is so difficult for you, but I thought December and ephemera, and I thought okay, defemaremba. That's the normal word. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. It's, I love it. But it's just that's what we want to do. <laughs> unpronounceable, but it's brilliant. <laughs> I think I have a problem with this question. I think you're done. I'm done. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara. Uh, yes. Okay. First part of the question advice on starting a YouTube channel. So I agree 100% with everything that Louisa has said. And I also advise you, if you're doing it for a business, to please check out podcast, I think, number one, where we discuss this in length. I don't want to repeat what I've said there. But what I would like to add is, no matter if you're creating this just as a hobby, just because you want to share your passion, you want to inspire others, or as a business, I think one thing is interesting to keep in mind especially when you compare Instagram to YouTube or even Pinterest, because of course, these are our main three channels, I would say, for what we do. Instagram, we know, is easy to post, very quick. You don't need a lot of technical experience, but it's, as, as the name says, Insta. It is instant and you're gone instantly. So that means if you know, if viewers don't, or followers or viewers don't see your post within like, I don't know, what is it now? Half an hour, I think the 
span gets shorter every few weeks, it's gone. It's there. I mean, it's still in your feed, obviously, but people won't notice it unless they go to your feed. So yeah, you post quickly, but it's gone just as quickly. Whereas YouTube, it's going to take you so much more effort to post it. And it's going to take the algorithm of YouTube so much longer to take notice of you to push your videos, but your, your content is there and it's relevant for years and years to come. So that is something to really keep in mind. It's worth the extra effort and it's worth hanging in there. YouTube is not something that will just take off, especially in our niche, which is, which is a niche within a niche. <laughs> you're not going to get instantly 10,000 followers unless you're Louisa, but otherwise you, <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> Rhonda? <laughs> We, no, I agree with her on that, girlfriend. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Well, Thank nice you, Rhonda. <laughs> the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but usually, this is not going to happen. So don't expect that. Don't expect rapid growth. Don't expect a huge following. It takes normally, it takes years. I'm not kidding. It takes years of dedication of consistent uploading. And as Louisa said, you're gonna to have to change your life. If this is something you wanna do regularly, it will impact your life at a level you will not expect. So just keep that in mind. So that's all I wanna to say to that first part of the question. I could go on for hours, seriously. <laughs> oh, maybe one more quick thing. If, if a lot of uh, subscribers on YouTube, one tip I also have is something I do on a regular basis. It, I'm giving you my tips here. Is search on YouTube, how to grow on YouTube. It seems <laughs> so, so banal, but it is so important because there are so many creators out there who specialize in this and who have tips that you have not thought about, even if you've been on YouTube for years. And things change all the time with YouTube. The algorithm changes all the time and you cannot really influence it, even though you think you can. And it's a science of its own. So in order to keep your channel relevant and in order to stay on top with how to keep your videos interesting to, to capture the audience and all that stuff, keep watching on how to improve your channel no matter what number you're at right now. That would be another tip that I have. Part two, <laughs> any tips on how to start journaling and using up junk journals instead of just making them? Yeah, so I do both. I make, I love making journals. I love working in journals, although I never, I don't think I hardly ever work in my own journals. I love working in other people's journals for some reason, I, I cannot explain that, but that's irrelevant. I think it's like, if, if I talk about my personal experience, what I love doing, and I have a whole series dedicated to that on Sundays, is journaling about everyday things. Because I'm a fish brain, and if I don't put them in a journal, I won't remember these things. So that's a way for me to, to keep my memories alive. And I love pairing the writing with the visual aspects of it that makes both of my, both halves of my brains be part of the process. And that helps me remember things as well, even if I'm not looking at the journal page. But it is such an enjoyable process to just put things in there from your everyday life, even if it's not something that you would consider is worth documenting. For example, if I take a walk in my botanical garden and I see a beautiful tree, I notice something special about that tree. I will put that in my journal. So it's things like this. If someone, if I have a special moment with someone, if I connect someone, a stranger on the street, because we look at each other in the eyes and we have a moment that we just both smile and we acknowledge each other. That is a moment I will put in my journal because three weeks from now, I will have forgotten that. So maybe that's something you could try to incorporate into a regular process. And, and I think that's something so wonderful to do. So much would get lost if we wouldn't do it. Then the other part was, do you like monthly prompts? 
Yeah, I'm like Louisa. I do and I don't. I don't have the same reasons that you do, Louisa. I think your reason was so interesting that you you like to know, you know, the person that's behind it, which totally makes sense, but I've never thought of it that way. I have to somehow be in the mood for prompts. And I don't know what triggers that, to be honest. There's months where I don't want to see a prompt list, and then there's months where I create where I just crave a prompt list and then usually I'll make my own because I don't like any of the ones I see so <laughs> because usually they're too vague for me like when there's just one word there it's too vague I, I don't know what to do with that if you if you tell me stamp it's like okay what do I do with the stamp you know it's not enough for me like I need something more specific it's got to be at least two words that's like the minimum that's that how to break a blank page I would just like to add to what to what Louisa said is the cool thing about junk journaling is you wherever do you have a blank page like we don't have blank pages we have book pages we have documents we have all sorts of stuff but it's never a blank page I mean I don't have any in my in in, in my junk journals I don't know about you too but I never have a blank page I mean at the very least it's got some coffee on it so I think that takes out so much of the anxiety anxiety yes of <laughs> of uh working on that page because it's not something you're breaking a junk journal is broke already so that's that's the beauty of it you know it can only get better from anything you you slap down on that page whether it's a scrap or black gesso or you know stamp it whatever anything will be a beautiful addition so just go for it and December daily, I think Louisa has covered. I would just like to add one, one thing. So both Louisa and I have very short intro videos on our channel already explaining in detail what Defemaremba is. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so please go check that for more information if you want to have some fun with us and create some very exciting ephemera. <laughs> Rhonda, let's hear it. Okay. I love what you guys have said, and I agree with almost all of it. On um, what advice would you have for someone just starting a YouTube channel or thinking of starting it? I would reiterate that it's really important to have a reason, come up with some reason, because if you're just doing it, I, it's not going to last. You're going to, you know, a flash in the pan and done, or, or you're not going to see any subscribers for a long time and you're going to get discouraged and just, you know, disappear. When I was first asked to start a YouTube channel, it was because of being in a Facebook group that I was in that we would show our creations and whatnot. And I had so many ladies on a regular basis saying, do you have you know, do you have a channel? Do you have a video that I can go to? And encouragement, you need to do this, you need to do this. And so when I thought about the prospect, it was scary for me, and I decided to do it. But what kicked it for me was that it would be something lasting that my kids and my grandkids, years down the road, could have and view mom or grandma, you know, when she was whatever, and I'd be long gone, you know, then. And so, but I agree completely with both you, Barbara and Louisa about don't put on rose colored glasses and think that it's just going to take off and be wonderful because it just doesn't work that way. And I've, I've been on longer than either of you gals, but I'm still behind subscriber wise than both of you. Would I love to be 30, 40, 50? I see some people with 110 and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> you know, you don't want to try to compare yourself with what someone else is doing. And you have to be your own. Why are you doing it? Keep that in mind. Okay, so moving on. Tips for to start journaling. Watch the videos out there watch the YouTube videos. There's a bazillion YouTube videos about how to start a journal. Find uh, something that you like and just there again, just start, you know, don't watch so many videos that you get 
caught up in, oh, I don't know about this one or that one or this. Don't watch that many, you know, watch two or three videos <laughs> and then just take it from there and just start somewhere. Okay. Do you like monthly prompts? No. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> there again, it's the rebel in me. When I was quilting, I didn't like patterns. So I created my own stuff. It's like, I don't know, my brain just goes this way. And when someone says, okay, this is the prompt. This is what you need to do. I go, why? Why do I have to do what you say? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rebel. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, so no, I don't like them. How to break a blank page. Uh, you guys have given great, great things. And my thing that I always, I would disagree just a little bit, Barbara, yes. on your saying there's not a blank page because yes. when I print out your adorable digitals, that other side is blank. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yes. <laughs> to begin yes. with. To start with. Understood. Got me. Um, yep. Yep. So I would, you know, coffee dye, tea dye, that is your friend. Little spray bottle with coffee. No more blank page. Or but, print you know, on both sides on. of the page. <laughs> yeah. Or print. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Love the plan with me for my schedule, but I want to create a journal for myself to work in. Any tips would be helpful. Well, you have to decide what it is you love. Maybe make a list, you know, write the things that you enjoy doing, the things that you love, and then maybe start gathering, you know, some of your papers or images or quotes or things like that, you know, things that you would like to include. I can't emphasize too much to be who you are. Be your own person. Don't try to reproduce everything that you see on YouTube because that's you know, my style is my style. Barbara's style is her style. Louise's style is her style. And anybody else that you watch, they're their own people. So take inspiration, but then be you. Be who you are. Are you planning to do December dailies? No. <laughs> Not daily. But I am planning on doing some of the prompts that uh, Luis and Barbara have. And I, yeah, I, in fact, I'm working on one, right? I was finishing one just before we did this recording. So, but I'm old, so I can have the advantage of saying, oh, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> or I can use, you know, I've got cancer, girlfriends. I can't use that today. <laughs> <laughs> so but yes and I would encourage everybody to just join in you know if you can't do it every day just you know hop in when you can it'll be a lot of fun wow thank you so much I think time has run out <laughs> it's been a crazy roller coaster ride this podcast yeah. I have a feeling very down to earth and and truthful so thank you so much to both of you for not just being here, but for sharing such personal, pers personal moments. <laughs> I hope you had fun as well. Yeah, any, any last words? Well, I think Louisa and I would like to share some last words. Are you ready, yeah. girlfriend? I'm ready. Okay. tell me i'm saying we love you <laughs> i love you too <laughs> wouldn't dare do that with you know <laughs> just anybody that's a sign of love girlfriend oh i appreciate you so much and to our viewers thank you so much for sharing this time with us i hope it was insightful and we hope it was inspirational and i hope to see you back here in the next episode Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. How do I stop this? Wait. <laughs> <laughs>